Okay, I still need to show the simulation. Forgot. Um, this is common source. We just say that a common source is like this. This is V out, this is V in. And this is RD. And I have all the equations, right? But now you're given this circuit. Can you find the gain, the input impedance, and the output impedance of this circuit? Now in E122, what will you do? Draw the small signal for this guy. Draw the small signal for the PMOS. Solve for KCL and KVL. Then you can get all the stuff that we want, right? But in this class, we don't want to do this anymore. I want you to do this in three minutes. Find out what is the gain and what is the input impedance. Then you start, need to map what you have learned, map any circuit to what you have learned. By looking at this, I see that, right? This is my thinking process. Okay, this is MOS, fine. And I see this is gate, this is drain, this is source. The first thing I will say, hey, this looks like a common source. Because input is at gate, output is at drain. It's a common source. But man, what I learned is that this is a transistor. Uh, this is supposed to be a resistor, but I'm given a transistor. Uh, if the professor had given me the RD, I already know that the gain must be equals to negative GM RD parallel R01. Correct? And, and by the way, what is GM? Is it GM1 or GM2 in this case? GM1, right? Because this is the transistor I used before. So I actually should actually erase all the number. This was the original equation, negative GMLDR0, right? The only problem is I'm given something like this. But however, then you think about all the derivation you did before. When you do this derivation, you only say that I have something called RD. Looking into the VDD is something called RD. Then maybe you want to have a shortcut and say, if I know what impedance it is when I look up, then isn't that I can use the same equation? Make sense? Because in my derivation, right, I just put RD, I get this equation. And this is our so-called RD is the impedance when I look up into the VDD. So if I know what is the input impedance when I look up here, I look up. If I know what it is, then I'm done because this is going to be negative GM1 RD parallel R01 because R01 is what I got from my original equation, right? So what is the input impedance, right? For some of you, you might already see it. If not, now I do want to draw a small signal for the PMOS. This is PMOS. And again, this is source, this is drain, this is gate, because this is PMOS, higher potential is at the source, right? And this is a constant bias, so this is grounded AC. And because of this, VGS for the PMOS is open circuit, um, it's zero, right? So this is open. So if you look up, what impedance do you see? Ah, uh, not two just like this. So turn out that, yes, this is not the same as what we have. But when you try to put into small signal, you find that this, you find that this R not RD is just equals to R02. Make sense? And some of you might be able to correlate what we learned before. What do we say here? The input impedance looks into the drain when the gate and the source are grounded is R0. Look at this one. This is the input impedance you look into the drain when the gate and the source are grounded. Gate is grounded, source is grounded, although it's PMOS. So I already know that looking up this is R02, if I, I'm experienced enough. Right? So as a result, I know that this is negative GM R, uh, R02 parallel R01. 
I do it in a few minutes. I don't need to solve any equation. And using the same token, then I know that RO2 just replace the RD. So the output impedance is just RO2 parallel RO1. On the, on the other hand, or you can say, I'll come here, I need to ground the input because of the definition of output impedance. I have two paths to the ground. One is looking down, which is R01. Another is looking up, R02. Again, VDD is AC ground. So I do have two paths that let me go to the ground. So I see R01 parallel R02, right? How about the input impedance? Well, the input impedance goes to the gate, so it should still be the same infinity. Is this okay? So, um, let me see. Let's see how many more I have. So uh, I should have time. So let me uh, just do a simulation on the... So here you see that I have a common gate amplifier, right? So the source, the input is here. The drain is here, connect to VDD to free volt. I have two different loading, right? The first loading is that, let's go back, I, 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 this one is connected to ground, so it has no effect. So what I'm going to do is uh, reconnect it to the simple one. Instead of using a constant current source, right, I will just uh, connect this to here. Right, so do you see that? This is a common source. This is Audi. Okay with that? Everyone okay with that? This is the Audi, right? So let's try to run it. Oh. I need to connect the salt current to the ground so that it will run the simulation. Okay, so let's look at the input. What is that? There's a wire there? Huh? Well, say again. There's a wire between V1 and gate. There's a yeah, wire between V1 and gate. It no, is. We can't see. Okay, <laughs> that is. Okay. Oh, you cannot see it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm um, need to learn from you again. I, I don't need to submit any lab report, that's the point. So which one again? Huh? Drafting option? Ten thickness. Yeah, that's... Oh, you got a professional. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, that's good. Okay, uh, but I run into some problem, however. Completely forgot what I was doing. Uh, so what I'm doing is that I have an offset voltage and I put in an amplitude and then with different, uh, with a frequency and I want to try to see the gain, okay? Uh, but then uh, what simulation am I running? Oh, you're trying to hit the current? No, now it's going to... Uh, or or yeah, yeah, I, I think I need to change the... Uh, somehow it, it's gone. Uh, the, the reason is here, because I'm doing this AC linear, Right, I, I'm doing the wrong uh, analysis. I, I, I will actually try to do the um, uh, transient instead, okay? So uh, let me try uh, stop time, let's see, uh, 10 seconds, and let's see what happens. Too much, uh, my frequency is too high actually. 
So let me, I right click here. Let me try 0 0.1 second. Too much? Just zoom it in. Yeah, I don't want to zoom because I want to probe different things. Right, so this is the input. You see that this is the input of my stuff, right? So now I look at the output also. This is the output. The blue one is the output. You do see the gain, right? And you see they are out of phase because the gain is negative. Now I have a big lambda, which is 0 0.1, refer to the uh, output resistance. If I try to make it zero, right? Remember, this is between about 0 0.9 and 0 0.84. So let's run it one more time. It is way much larger, right? Now, uh, the, bi yeah, the biasing is also changed because uh, of the current is different. But the gain is much larger, right? It's a 0 point, about 0 point, uh, 0 0.05. Okay, I'm getting it. Okay, uh, how about you teach me how to do it? <laughs> right here on the ground. Oh, here, I see. Oh, I, I don't mean, I mean uh, overlap, overlap then. We cannot do it all divided by wind because it has a DC. I just want to overlap the previous result. Oh, yeah. But anyway, you see the gain is much larger, right? Because the because of this channel length modulation, right? But if I try to use an ideal current source, then uh, I don't have this problem. Oh uh, no, I still have this problem. But uh, what what I try to say is, now the gain is two hundred kilo ohm parallel R zero. Now R zero is now infinity, so this is two hundred kilo ohm. Right, if I try to have an ideal current source, uh, but I, I want to go back to here because it will become infinity. Let's say the lambda is 0 0.1. Look at this, right? So I run it one more time. This is the gain when lambda is 0 0.1. Now, instead of having this uh, resistor, what I'm going to do now is to connect it to the ideal current source. F3, okay. Thank you. Okay, I might have an extra note. No, I need to connect the other one, otherwise it will have the, where's the, huh? I need to connect this to the one. Right, otherwise it has matrix problem. Now I, I try to run it again. Remember I have the same lambda, right? Okay, I cannot show you, it does not go up too, too high. Oh, okay, yeah, because this lambda is dominating. Now, if I make this to zero, or maybe very small, right, instead of zero, it be super high, because this is the AC analysis. So that's why you get something like uh, higher than the VD, okay? Because we have this, uh, we have this, uh, how to say, this ideal current source. It will give you this type of problem. Because now the transistor has a lambda, which is very small. So it has very large R0. And at the same time, this one is ideal. It has infinite resistor. So Rd parallel R0 is very high. And then you will run into this uh, simulation problem, okay? But the, the main point here I want to show you is that the gain of the common source due to two things. Maybe I did not present this well. One is the loading. Another is R0. The total gain depends on R0 parallel Rd, right? So how can you improve this R0? You can reduce the channel length modulation, make the channel length very long. But how about the loading? Even you have a perfect channel length modulation, if your loading is not good, it limits your gain. RD will limit your gain. So you either use an ideal current source that we'll talk about cascode circuit later. 
This is something you need to engineer. Okay. Uh, my demo is not very good because of the. You guys try to say that I don't know how to use it. So. <laughs> But, but 